Hey everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. So on today's video, we're going to be doing a tarot and oracle collection tour. Now this video was actually recommended by one of you guys. So if you do have a video that you would like to see me do on this channel, feel free to put it down in the comment section and I do try my best to get around to as many of them as I can. But today's video is going to be a collection tour of my tarot and oracle cards. Mainly going through each deck in turn, whether or not I use it frequently, what is it about the deck that I like and why did I buy it? Because I do have a rather extensive collection of decks that might inspire you in your own tarot and oracle purchases. Now before we get started, I do just want to say that this collection has been built up over a long period of time. I think it's been 10 or 11 years since I started this collection and you definitely don't need to have this many tarot decks. I have this many tarot and oracle decks just because I really enjoy collecting them, I really enjoy working with them in spell work and ritual, on altars and also for divination. The second thing is that you do not need to read oracle or tarot cards in order to be a practicing witch. You can read them without being a practicing witch and you can also not read them and still be a practicing witch. Tarot, oracle and most other forms of divination are additions to witchcraft. They aren't necessarily 100% involved within the magical practice so if you don't find that it's something that you want to do or that you're particularly drawn to, don't feel the need to actually do it within your magical tradition if you don't feel comfortable doing so. The third thing is that if you would like to know the name of any of the decks and the creator of them, I will link them all down in the description box chronologically with their walkthrough video if I've done them so that you guys can properly see all of the cards and have a lot more information about them in a full video. So with that all being said, let's start going through the cards. Now these aren't going to be in a chronological order, mainly because I don't really remember which order I got them in. I know the first cards that I got and I know the most recent cards that I got, but the ones in the middle are just a, they're just a little bit of a blur. I don't really remember them. So I'm just gonna go through them in the order that I kind of pull them off the arm of the sofa and go through it that way. So the first deck that we're gonna be talking about is this one. This is the Living Altar Oracle. Now this is actually one of my most recent decks. I'll admit it's not the most recent because I might have a little bit of a shopping problem when it comes to books and tarot and oracle cards. But this is one of the most recent ones that I've done as a video on the channel and it's probably gone on to become one of my favourite decks of cards to use. There are a few others that are in contention for the top spot, but this is definitely one of the top three at least. It's a really, really interesting deck. It is exceptionally heavy. This is actually probably one of the heaviest and bulkiest decks in my collection, which does make it a little tricky to store when you do have so many others. And it's also the only deck of this size, which also makes it a little bit tricky to store because it doesn't really kind of slot in anywhere on bookshelves or in drawers but it is one of my favorite decks, largely because it has two different sets of cards inside the deck itself. So there are divination cards, which are used for card readings, and then there's also a series of spell cards which depict magical practice that you can then use in your own spell work, rituals, manifestation altars, etc. So I do really, really enjoy them. They have a really interesting energy and it's very primal. The artwork is really, really unusual. It definitely isn't everyone's cup of tea, but I really, really enjoy it and I find them super easy to read. Now they are a little bit on the pricey side for a deck of cards. They are around £65, which is a considerable amount, but I did get them when they were available on Kickstarter just because I loved the artwork and resonated with it so well. The people that created the deck are magical practitioners themselves and that was something that really, really was significant for me because you do find that a lot of people that create decks of cards are illustrators or they are tarot and oracle card readers. You don't really find many tarot cards or oracle cards being created by witches and magical practitioners themselves and so a lot of cards kind of miss the mark for me because they aren't practical for me as a magical practitioner. But this deck I really like because the people that created it have really taken into account the use of cards within magic. And so there are cards that represent phases of life, phases of the year, phases of the moon, different aspects of workings, the elements, the sabbats that we can really draw on in spell work and ritual. So it's gone on to become one of my favorite decks. And when I need a no nonsense answer from an oracle deck, 
this is the deck that I go for. Typically, before I got this deck, if I wanted a no-nonsense answer, I would go to one of my tarot decks. But because this contains so many different options in the cards, I find that you can have a really good balanced spread when you're doing a reading. The only thing that I don't like so much is that the book is a little hard to understand because there is no necessary description of the cards. It's essentially just like a spell. But I find that with these cards, I can read them intuitively, so I don't actually need the book, which is always good. So these are probably in at least the top three, maybe even the top two decks of all time. So the next deck is actually the biggest, I think, the biggest and the bulkiest in this collection, and that is this one. This is a Yogic Path. Now, this is another one that I did do a video on because I was very, very excited to get it. It is a very, very big set of cards, and I really like this one because it, they very much think it through when they're creating the box. So the box itself is stunning, <laughs> stunning. And inside, they've thought everything through, so the book is gorgeous, and it's actually one of the best guidebooks. Actually, it might be the best guidebook I've ever received in a set of oracle or tarot cards, because it's sizable. That's the actual size of the book. It's like a standard book size, which is great for anyone that has mobility problems, that struggles to deal with the stupid little tiny books or the faffy little leaflets. I hate the faffy little leaflets. And it is just such a well-made deck. The book itself is actually in colour, which I really like because me personally, I am dyslexic and I struggle to read black writing on white pages. So the pages in this are actually mostly coloured. I think most of them are, which massively, massively helps me to actually, you know, read the damn thing. And then the cards come in their own separate box. They aren't just thrown in to this giant box loose, like most of the decks I'm going to be talking about. This has its own separate box, so that if you want to go traveling and you don't want to take this giant thing with you, you can just take this. Genius. The cards themselves are absolutely stunning. Hopefully while I'm doing this video, I can put up some pictures of me showing you the cards. They are absolutely, unbelievably beautiful. Now I will say that I haven't done many readings with this deck, mainly because at the moment I am just not feeling it. I tend to go with whichever deck I am most drawn to for that particular reading, and this one is not one that I've been particularly drawn to at the moment. That might change. I do find that I am more drawn to decks like this in the spring and the summer rather than the autumn and the winter, so that will probably change. But it is created by one of my favourite illustrators, and that is Danielle Knoll. Now, they pop up on multiple of my decks, and I absolutely love the artwork. So that was one of the reasons why I got this. It is also really good for meditations. So if you do enjoy using cards as a focus point in meditation, this is a fantastic deck because it does encompass that idea and that aspect into the cards themselves, which is just absolutely gorgeous. It's definitely something that's really good for anyone that is really dedicated to their yoga practices and encompasses that within their magical tradition or their tarot and oracle readings. It's a really, really good deck. I just, I'm not particularly drawn to it at the moment, you know? There's nothing wrong with the deck, it's just, I'm not really feeling it. So the next deck is this one. This is Queen of the Moon Oracle. Now this deck has a very sentimental place in my heart a little bit. I got this deck at an event that I was working and there was an absolutely wonderful lady there and I would always talk to her and just chat with her throughout the day and she used to sell tarot and oracle cards and she would also sell a lot of witchcraft books and we kind of got chatting in every event that we were there together, we'd just stand and chat for a while and she was a magical practitioner and she was fascinated with the moon and the last time I got something from her, which was this deck, we were talking about the moon exhibit that had arrived in London. I don't know if it's still happening because of, you know, everything. But at the time there was a large moon exhibit happening. I think it was in the Natural History Museum in London. And essentially there was this ginormous, beautiful, lit up moon that you could go and see and there were loads of exhibits around it. And she was so excited to be able to go. And unfortunately, since the last time I spoke to her, she has passed away. And this deck always reminds me of her. And so it's very sentimental for me, not necessarily because of the deck itself, 
but because of the connection to the deck. And I think a lot of people end up that way with their cards. Certain cards represent different areas in their life, different people, different time periods. And so you kind of form a sentimental attachment. So I don't really use this deck as a deck of cards for reading, but it does have that sentimental attachment that I never really want to let go of them. So this is a really, really beautiful deck. The artwork is stunning. I've never done a walkthrough of it, but hopefully I'll still have some images up of the cards. And if anyone wants to see me do a walkthrough of it, just let me know and I'll happily do a walkthrough because I really do enjoy those kind of videos. The deck itself is exceptionally aesthetically pleasing. It represents different phases of the moon with different aspects of life and also with different ideas within life, things like abundance and love, uh, rebirth, forgiveness, those kind of things. So you can work with them through the cyclical energy of the moon, but you can also work with them for specific intentions. And because of that, I often put these cards on altars. So you can't really see it right now, but there is a card sitting just, just up there. And it is actually from this deck and it's the acceptance card. So often I will use this to represent phases of life, phases of just day-to-day -day experiences, things I want to manifest. And I will use them that way rather than as a divination deck. Mainly because for me, the cards in this don't give a wide enough spread of outcomes for me to really be comfortable using it for divination readings. But it is so beautiful that it would be great if you are a lunar practitioner or if you just enjoy working with the phases of the moon. You can add cards into ceremonies and rituals and so on. And that's mainly what I use this deck for. Next, we have a tarot deck. Now, I've not actually mentioned tarot decks yet, but here is the first one in my collection. This is the Starman Tarot. Now, this is actually a David Bowie-inspired tarot deck, and the artwork is unbelievably chaotic, and it's amazing. The artwork is very... The best way I can describe it is it, it looks like drug trips are portrayed in movies. I have to say I've never experienced it myself, but you know what I mean when it's all like crazy colours and floating things. That is what this deck just is in its entirety. And David Bowie and his face appears throughout the entire deck along with a collection of very beautiful models wearing amazing things with a lot of colours. So if the box looks kind of chaotic, imagine what the inside looks like. Now this is one that I got not necessarily to read as a tarot deck, but mainly just because I really like David Bowie. And when I had the option to have the David Bowie tarot, essentially, I was going to take it. So I actually ended up putting some of these on my store because I loved them so, so much. So I don't really use the cards for divination purposes. They're mainly just aesthetically pleasing and I, Honestly, I mainly just have it as a collector's piece because who doesn't want a David Bowie tarot? I mean, unless you don't like David Bowie, but who doesn't like David Bowie? Please don't answer that question. I'd rather just live under the illusion that everyone likes David Bowie. Oh, and the other cool thing about it is that it doesn't open like a normal box. It opens up here, which is just really, really cool. Like, nifty, right? I like that. I'm fed up of like the flap opening boxes because they're so annoying. I hate those fiddly little flaps and I always end up tearing the box. So this one just goes whoop, whoop. I love it. It's a great tower deck. I just, I just never personally read it. Next up, we have another oracle deck. This is the Saints and Mystics Oracle. Now, this is one that I did a walkthrough on on my channel, and it isn't a deck that I read as an oracle deck. Instead, I use these as archetype cards. So every card within this deck represents a saint, a mystic, or a significant member of occult and spiritualism history. So there's everyone from Dion Fortune to Marie Laveau. There are so many different cards in here, and I use these mainly as archetype cards, representation cards, and and just as single draw cards. I never do full spreads with them because there just isn't the amount of cards that you would need and they are too specific, but kind of a bad specific. You know, what can you really get from drawing the Dion Fortune card? Not much. There isn't much you can gain from them, but I do enjoy using them as single draws just at the end of a much larger reading and doing it that way. Or I like using them as a significant figure to focus on during meditation, spell work and ritual when you want to manifest things within you and within your life that they personally had within their own. Whether that was courage, open-mindedness, psychic intuition, whatever it might be, I will draw on that by using using the cards in spell work and ritual. So is it my most used deck? 
Definitely not. And you will see that quite a lot. I am a creature of habit. If I like a deck, I will keep using that deck and I will never stop using that deck until I find another deck that I like and then I'll kind of I'll kind of add it into the rotation but it's quite rare for me to have a new deck of cards added into the rotation and this isn't one that got added into the rotation of reading cards but it still is really beautiful and it's great if you follow one of the saints that's spoken about or you work with any of the people that are involved that is a really good way of representing them within that space. So speaking of cards that I use religiously, this is probably my most used Oracle deck of all time. Actually, scrap that. This is my most used Oracle deck of all time. This is the Work Your Light Oracle. Now, I adore this deck. It might end up being pushed off the number one position for Oracle cards by the Living Altar Oracle, mainly because that deck has a lot more balance to it. It is a lot more dualistic than this one. This one is mainly love and light, happiness, peace and pastel, which I actually really like. I'm not really a pastel person. If you if you didn't notice, I don't really do pastel, but this is something that I do do in pastel because <laughs> do do. I'm like a child, I swear. And I really, really enjoy this deck. It has really beautiful artwork. The illustrations are just stunning. And it's another Danielle Knoll illustrated card deck, which is one of the reasons why I love the Yogic Path Oracle and this deck is because I love Danielle Knoll's artwork and always will. And I'm trying to collect as many of their decks as I can. So I, I absolutely love this deck. It does have mainly positive responses. So what I will typically do and what people have seen me do on my Instagram is that I will do a tarot spread and then I'll draw one of these cards and have that card be a focal point and the thing that the rest of the reading might end up centering around or the thing that you need to think of in the here and now while you're working towards your goal that we've spoken about in a reading. So I tend to use it in that format rather than doing a three card card spread or anything more intricate, mainly because they just don't have the variety in answers, but it is a stunning deck and it's also really, really easy to intuitively read. So if you are like me and you struggle to intuitively read Oracle decks, this is one that I found really, really enjoyable. So it could be worth having a look at the walkthrough video or looking at pictures online to see if it works for you as well. So another Oracle deck, this is the Halloween Oracle. Now this is one of the card decks that I don't use for readings. I mainly use as artwork or I use them as symbolism and aspects that I want to bring into ritual spell work, manifestation altars, and it does often have a home up here because I love the artwork and just the visuals of the card so much. If you didn't notice, it is Halloween themed, which is my favorite holiday of the entire year. I am spooky obsessed. So I'm very, very happy that I managed to get this deck. Every single card within the deck has its own unique spookiness. Some of them are about witches, cauldrons, black cats. So I really, really love the imagery. I would say it's not ideal for working with readings, or at least not extensive readings. I'd say a couple of cards is a really good way of using this deck, but anything more than that, and you're probably not going to get much out of it divination wise, but they can be really good focal point cards. They can be really good for ancestor work, some of them, because some of them do really tap into the veil and the people that have gone before, and it does say at the bottom, lifting the veil between the worlds every night. This deck is really good for anyone that likes collecting unusual decks. For me, because I love Halloween so much, I just had to get this deck. Would I necessarily recommend it for readings? Not really, no, but it, it, it looks pretty and I like skulls, so bonus, I guess. Back to tarot again. This time we have the very traditional Rider Waite Smith tarot deck. Now this is the OG. This is the basis of most modern tarot decks is the Rider Waite Smith. Now I did a video fairly recently on the artist that created the artwork for this deck. So if you do want to see that, it is a really interesting historical tour very briefly into the life of Pamela Smith, who was the illustrator. And I think she's very much forgotten. Although in this particular version of the deck, you get this little tiny card in the front that tells you a little bit about her. You don't really get much else. And in any other version of the deck, you don't get that 
piddly little card. So I don't necessarily read this deck as an everyday tarot deck. I just don't feel the need to. I have decks that I connect with much more strongly that I will choose to use instead. But when I was getting a lot of questions about tarot reading, or when I used to guide people and assist people with tarot readings, I thought it was really useful to have this deck because most mainstream books on tarot are using the images of the Rider Waite Smith deck. So it's a little bit confusing to be referencing a book or to be looking at a book that someone owns and then to be showing them images that weren't the same as the ones in the book. So I did get this mainly as a teaching aid to help show people how to read the meaning in the cards. So I mainly have it for that and it's just nice to have the OG tarot deck that we see modern times anyway. So the images in this are really nice actually. Some people don't like them, some people prefer the vivid version of the deck, which you can still get. This is the original, original Rider Waite deck. So this is the one with the very um, plain washed out cards, which definitely isn't for everyone. But if someone is new to tarot reading and they are referencing beginner books on tarot, it can be useful to start with this deck because it matches the images perfectly and you can read the book and you can reference the images in the tarot cards and you can really see what they're talking about. It is a little bit more confusing if you have never necessarily seen or used the Rider Waite Smith deck and then you're referencing a book that solely uses that deck because the imagery is never quite the same. So it could be a good option if you want it in your collection like I did, if you're using it as a teaching aid, if you are a tarot teacher, it can be exceptionally useful for beginners because I personally found that when you are referencing a completely different deck it can get a little confusing and it's also good if you do just want to utilize the deck to teach yourself so if you're going between books if you just want to learn the basics of the meanings of the symbols within the cards it can be a really great deck to use and it's actually pretty affordable for tarot decks i have a lot of very expensive decks and this was actually really really cheap in comparison i think around here it's about 12 to 15 pounds for this deck which is really really cheap considering i've spent like 75 quid 75 pounds on a tarot deck. I'm ashamed of myself, but I do love the deck, so all's fair, right? So speaking of Rider Waite and the similarities between that deck and a lot of others, this is the Wheel of the Year Tarot. Now this deck I actually won at an event, so I would do events and every time there would be a raffle and every person that was having a stall at the event would have to give something into the raffle. And then you buy tickets and all the ticket money goes to charity. So we would always put something into the raffle and then we'd also get five tickets because we wanted to support the charity. And I ended up winning this in one of the drawers and this is the Wheel of the Year Tarot. This deck is actually essentially the same deck as the Rider Waite Smith. It's just a little bit more kitsch in its imagery. It's a little bit more Wiccan in its imagery, which could be really good for anyone that does want a very traditional aesthetic deck that's similar to Rider Waite Smith but with a little bit of more Wiccan influence. So it is a really, really beautiful deck. It just isn't necessarily for me. It's so similar to the Rider Waite Smith that I would rather teach with the Rider Waite Smith. And it's so similar to the Rider Waite Smith that I wouldn't necessarily use it within my own practice. It's essentially that kid in school that copies your homework and changes it ju just, just a little bit. That is what this deck is. It's essentially a copy and paste version of the Rider Waite, but with slightly more colorful imagery. So if that is the kind of thing that you're interested in, this could be a really good deck and it's also not particularly expensive. It's in kind of the same price category as the Rider Waite Smith deck, maybe just a little bit more expensive because it's a little harder to find. But yes, this is the deck. I don't think I've ever used this for a reading, mainly because I've always ended up going to one of my other decks. You guys should see the tower of tarot and oracle cards that I'm developing over here. This is like a backwards game of Jenga and it could all end incredibly badly. <laughs> like incredibly badly. So the next is an oracle deck. Now this is such an interesting oracle deck. It's unbelievable. Now I have tidied up this filming room. And whilst I was tidying it up, I actually misplaced two other decks by the same 
artist. So I will let you know at the bottom of the screen which decks these were, but this is the only one that I can find at the moment and it's currently 20 past one in the morning, so I can't really be rummaging around too much. But this is the Oracle of the Pagan Spirit deck by Edwin Courtney and Andrew Helm. Now I have actually attended events with the people that create this deck and they are absolutely wonderful people, the nicest people that you could ever hope to meet. And when I was there, I got this deck. Now I was so torn, they do a bunch of really, really beautiful artwork and canvases, but I ended up getting this and it's stunning. It's gorgeous. It's kind of weird. It's a little, you can't tell how far away any of the images are because it's done in a way to distort the imagery. It very much, it, it's strange. You're looking at the cards and the cards appear to move. The characters in the cards almost move and change their position and blink and it is so beautifully creepy and it really sucks you in. And I think if you're looking for a deck of cards that you can really do meditations with, trance work with, these cards might just be for you. Now I did get sent the other two of this collection of cards. And when I was sent the other two, I was informed by the creators that they were thinking of discontinuing the decks. I'm gonna have to check whether they have since been discontinued because honestly, I love their decks. They are of my top decks of all time. I don't use these for readings. I do use them for meditations, trance work, spell work, ritual, altars. They are gorgeous. Now I have done a full video on the artwork of this deck. If you do want to see it, as always, it's linked up here and down in the description box, but it is such a trippy deck. It's a bit like Marmite. Some people hate the fact that the cards and the characters appear to move. Some people absolutely love it. There are lots and lots of figures from pagan mythology in this deck and that's one of the reasons why I love it so much. And so it's great for putting on altars and in sacred spaces to really bring forth that energy. And they do come with a little guidebook. Now, because this is a self-published deck, this isn't put through a large manufacturer. It is, of course, going to be slightly different than a mainstream deck. So the books are printed and there's no images in the book, which I don't mind because it's all done by them. The cards are made by them, the boxes, this little booklet. So I really, really like it. The only downside is that if you're prone to losing things, this book doesn't fit in the box. So you have to have it loose. But I personally don't mind because I keep all of my decks either on this shelf or I keep it in the cabinet that I've got, the little apothecary cabinet. So I like to just keep them next to one another on a shelf and that seems to be pretty good. But if you do like the idea of these cards, I would definitely check out uh, their website, I will link it down below. I don't know if they still do the cards, but it is worth checking if you are interested. Now, next we have a very unusual set of cards. These are 3D tarot cards. Yes, you heard that right. They, they are 3D tarot cards. Now this is a royal tarot deck. I know that some people call it different things. I personally have always referred to it as a royal deck where it only contains the major arcana cards. Now these also have a story behind them and it's mainly the reason why I love these cards so much. I never actually do readings with them. Ever. I keep them because of the story that goes behind them. So when I went on holiday for the first time, just myself and my partner, we went to Gibraltar. Now Gibraltar is a really, really fascinating place. It is a British territory, so everyone speaks English and they use the British pound and they serve British food and it's all just kind of Britain abroad. It's kind of odd really, but it's a really, really beautiful place anyone wants to go, I would thoroughly recommend it. It's expensive, but it is gorgeous. It's absolutely stunning. And while we were there, in a side alley, while we were exploring the town, there was this little occult shop. And the first day we went, it was closed. But they had this little window, and in the window were little candles and trinkets. And then up one corner was this. And I looked at it and went, oh, that is so cool. A 3D tarot deck, I've never, ever seen that before. So we waited a few days and we went back one day and it was open and we went in and it's gorgeous inside. It's very quaint, very traditionally Spanish because Gibraltar does border Spain. It's, it's a very traditionally Spanish shop when you go in. And there was this lovely gentleman there and he was talking us through all the items and he was so excitable. He was 
like a kid in a sweet shop. He was he just loved everything in his own shop. And as you peered through the back of the shop, so it was like a little front bit and then there was a back room. The back room was clad floor to ceiling and then over the ceiling in velvet tapestries and there was a table in the center of the room that had a cloth on it and it had a set of tarot cards spread out over it and he offered readings and therapies throughout the day oh it was gorgeous it was like um you know those shops in movies where they pop up and you go in them like once and then you try to go back again and the shop's just gone and it, no one has any memory of it being there it was that kind of a shop and when I was in there, I got some honey candles. So they were candles that he made that were infused with honey and I still have them. I refuse to burn them. Sorry, I'm kind of going completely off on a tangent here, but this was just the most magical experience ever. And I still have the candles and they smell so good. So I got some of the candles and my partner got some of the candles, but he didn't actually sell the decks himself. Instead, it's a way for people to advertise that they offer tarot readings is that they stick a deck of cards in the window. And I never really realized this at the time because obviously here in the UK, I do shows and tarot readers are just everywhere. But over there, it's a little bit more taboo by the sounds of it to just openly say that you offer tarot readings. So what you would do is you would put a deck of cards in the window and then anyone that knew what that meant could come in and get a tarot or whatever kind of divination reading off you but he did point me in the direction to where he got these from. And when I got home, I got myself a set and I never used them. I've literally never used them because they're really difficult to shuffle and they make that really annoying noise. Are you ready for this? We're gonna do a little bit of ASMR here, right? Ugh. There is something about that noise that just brings me back to like 2004. No, anyone else? That just like, I just get teleported back to 2004 because everything, had that sound to it. And that is exactly what the cards sound like because they are the very traditional 3D where it's essentially just two images on opposing edges of these little crinkles. So when you shift the card, it changes position, but they're so cool. And I went completely off on a tangent there, but that is probably one of my most interesting stories with a deck of cards ever. So let's go back to Oracle for a minute. I only have one more Oracle deck after this, but this is the Camelot Oracle. Now I've actually never used this deck because it's a very, very recent purchase. I only got this a few months ago and it's huge. It's not the thickest deck in my collection, but it is definitely the most sizable. Like this deck is huge, huge, huge. And it's really, really unusual. So whereas you typically get a deck of cards and inside there is a book and then there is the cards, this isn't like that. So you might be deceived into thinking that the cards are the size of the deck box, but they're not. So that is the size of the deck box. Inside there is this huge book it actually might be bigger than the Yogic Path Tarot. I've actually never got them out back to back, so I've never really seen or noticed the size comparison. But this deck book is huge, and inside there are little illustrations for all the decks, as well as the information, which I love. I love being able to compare the images to the card itself. But then, there is some oddities in this box. So there's then this, which is a map. And it is, it is big, like, it, it is, it is substantial, you know? And it looks like this. And there are individual squares where the cards can sit. So there's Castle Mortal, Craig Castle, The Wells, Avalon Camelot, Saras, Green Chapel, Joyous Guard, and the Hermitage. And then between each of these like places, there are different paths. So there's the wandering path, the deepening path, the turning path, the resolute path, the determined path, the hero's path, the doubtful path, and the honored path. And then you get to the cards. There's a reason I haven't used it yet. And it's mainly cause I'm confused. <laughs> I'm used to normal Oracle cards, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not used to board games being involved, but I was interested. So you then get to the cards. Now the cards are interesting as well because they're split between the path 
cards, like the doubtful path, the hero's path. And then you have the actual deck of cards. And I've had this deck now for like a month, two months. It's probably been more like two, three months, honestly, because time is merging together. I'm pretty certain the last time I checked it was June. And now it's Samhain. So I'm, I'm a little confused by time. And I'm so confused by this deck. So if anyone has this deck, can you like explain it to me? Because I am confused. I think I will really like it when I can fully wrap my head around what on earth I'm meant to be doing. But I'm very, very used to just being able to sit down and just read a deck of cards without having to play a board game at the same time. It's not actually a board game, it just kind of gives me, you know, the Dungeons and Dragons kind of vibe. But I really like the artwork for this deck and when I can figure out how to use it, I think I will get a lot of use out of it, whether it's for readings or whether it's just for archetype cards, because each of the card does represent an individual that's found in Arthurian legend. And you guys know, I love a bit of Arthurian legend. So I've never used this deck, mainly because I'm a bit confused. I'm, I'm just a bit baffled by the sheet thing, you know, that thing. So next up we have another tarot deck. Now this is tiny, tiny, and it is another royal tarot. Now based on what it says at the top, I'm pretty certain that they're also called Grand Trump decks, which does kind of sounds really funny to me because I think I'm literally nine years old. Now this is actually a royal tarot, so it only contains the major arcana cards and it is the first tarot deck that I ever got. And it's battered to hell, it's like, falling apart at the edges and yeah this was the first one that I ever got because for a long time I was actually solely reading runes. Elder Firth Arc runes were just something that came really naturally to me and I have been reading them for a very very long time. Tarot actually only came later and then Oracle decks actually came later than that. So this was my first Tarot deck and my first Oracle deck and I never mentioned it actually was the Work Your Light. I got that deck in Glastonbury and it was a treat to myself because I really wanted to read Oracle decks and that was the deck that I really desperately wanted so I found it in the last shop in Glastonbury that we went to and I got it in there because as much as Glastonbury might be considered kitschy and overpriced to some people I really wanted to support the shops there because I know what it's like to try to support a business especially somewhere like Glastonbury where it's quite expensive but this was the first set of tarot cards that I got and I actually can't use these. Now some of you might be thinking but why? And some of you are like, hmm, I've heard you talk about this in a live stream. I have spoken about this in a live stream. So this deck of cards hates me. I mean, this deck of cards actually legitimately hates me. Now I'm gonna give a little bit of a trigger warning here. If you don't like talks of blood, I will leave a timestamp at the bottom of the screen so that you can skip to that bit if you don't wanna hear about why I can't use this deck because it is the most interesting story of all of them. But if you don't like talks of blood, then it's not going to be for you. So it is a major arcana deck, and that wasn't the reason I couldn't read them. I actually can't read them because every single time I try to, I get a nosebleed. So they're really intuitive. I actually found reading them really, really easy. It wasn't so much the reading that was the problem, it was the stopping the bleeding that was a little bit of the problem. So I do have a lot of allergies, and especially in the summer, I get really, really severe hay fever. And so some of this might be equated to it being a really high pollen season. And that's what I thought at first. So I kept using them. Note to self, shouldn't have kept using them. It didn't go well. <laughs> so I ended up using them and I was determined, you know, the nosebleeds are just something that's happening because of my allergies. You know, that's all it is. Except every time I read these cards, I would get a nosebleed. But any other time, I wouldn't get a nosebleed. So I've even tried to use these more recently and I always get a nosebleed. And if I don't get a nosebleed, you know that feeling, that kind of pressure feeling? I don't know if anyone has bad nosebleeds, but you get this kind of like pressure feeling when you know it's gonna happen. And if I put the cards away right there and then, I don't get a nosebleed. But if I continue, then I get a nosebleed. And it's actually so bad that I can't even give these cards to someone else because the booklet and all of the cards just have blood on them. Just like, drip marks where I've been like determined to finish a reading. I've tried cleansing them. I've tried protecting myself beforehand. I have tried putting them away for years and years and years on end. I still can't use them. So these I will never get rid of. One, because I can't. Two, because they are a symbol of a part of my practice where I was 
using something that I maybe wasn't connected to, that I was basically being told that weren't for me in a very physical way. And I was determined to keep using them because I was so adamant that I would learn to read tarot. And that's kind of something I almost aspire to be again, that very optimistic, upbeat excitement for learning something. So these have a really significant place in my heart because of that. So yes, a little bit of a traumatic history with that one, but I keep it nonetheless, although I will never use it. <laughs> I will never use it. And I've even had other people say that they won't use the cards either because there's this vibe on them that you can't get rid of. It's almost as though they've been somewhere with such a horrible history that it's deeply embedded itself into the cards and it doesn't matter what I do, no matter how intensive a cleanse I give it, it doesn't budge, does not budge, other people have tried, also doesn't budge, so they're just, they just sit. They just sit and I can admire them but not use them. I can look but not touch, as the saying goes. So next we have another deck of tarot cards that also have quite an interesting story. My most used cards are typically in these little bags. This one is in an organza bag mainly because I needed to protect it because this is a vintage deck and you can definitely tell that by looking at it. It's a little battered, a little. The previous owners of it did not necessarily treat it with the utmost kindness. This is the Magic Manga Tarot. Now, I don't know if this edition is still in print. I know that there is a new Magic Manga Tarot, but I'm not sure if it's the same one. So this is a really, really interesting deck. I actually got this at a local MBS show. It was one that I wasn't attending as a stall holder. I was actually just going because I really enjoy going to the events. And there was a table there that was selling secondhand tarot decks and books and a lot of people will go never use a second hand tarot deck i personally like to give them new life and honestly with how battered this deck is i was a little bit concerned as to what would happen if someone didn't purchase the deck and i don't know what it was this individual on the front this guy over here there is something about him when i walked past the stall the first time i didn't even take a second glance at it i just walked past it and there was this like pulsating energy coming off that stall. It was just a flat tabletop stall with just hundreds of used books and tarot cards on it and there was something there that was just screaming at me like pulsing energy. So we went round and we kind of had a bit of a browse and then we came back to this table and I went over it, you know, as you do, you know, sensing all the energy over the table and it was this deck and oh my goodness, the best, the best tower deck I've ever used. And I'm telling you directly because I, I know you can hear me. I sound completely delusional right now, but this gentleman on the front has a very, very strong influence over this deck. And I know that just by the readings that I've done, I've spent enough time with this deck now to know the personality of it. A very sassy deck. They very much like to be worked with frequently or they will trick you with answers is something that I found. But when you treat them with respect, when you do the readings appropriately, when you only read for significant things, by golly, some of the best readings I've ever done in my entire life are thanks to this deck in particular. The cards are not battered like the box. The cards, it appears, have been in pretty good condition. It's only really the box that's damaged, so I do try to protect it as much as I can. But this deck is unbelievable. Whoever used this deck before has left such a strong imprint on it that I actually never cleansed the deck. Some of you are going to be like, oh, how could you not cleanse the deck? But no, I tend to find, I think we have an obsessive cleanse culture that we're dealing with right now, where everyone cleanses everything 24 seven, and some things don't need to be cleansed, some things do. I'm not saying that nothing needs to be cleansed, but when you have a deck like this that has its own personality, that has developed over time with the people that have owned it, I didn't wanna take that away from the deck, or from me being able to read the deck, and for me, the energy on the deck isn't positive, it's not negative, it's entirely neutral, but it's exceptionally strong. Even holding it, I can feel it like pulsing down my arm. It is such a bizarre feeling when you hold this deck, it's so intense. But that is one of my favourite tarot decks of all time. 
because of the history of it, because of where I found it, and just how fortunate I am to have actually been able to find it because I was actually nearly not able to go to that event. It was one of those last minute, we saw it on the way to somewhere and we popped in and I found some amazing things in there. So I'm very, very grateful that I managed to go. The next deck is an Oracle deck. This is actually my newest Oracle deck. This is the Mists of Avalon Oracle. Now this is stunning. It's all over Instagram right now. At least it's all over my Instagram. The illustrator is fantastic. I'm actually planning on buying some of their artwork just as prints because it's stunning. I can't get over the artwork. It's gorgeous. It's definitely not going to be everyone's style, but it is really, really beautiful. And I'll be honest, I got this deck for two reasons. The first is that the Camelot Oracle deck confused the hell out of me. So I got this one as a Avalon Camelot inspired deck, but also within this deck, there is a card for the White Well. And if you don't know, the Isle of Avalon is very closely connected with Glastonbury, my favorite place on earth. And there is a card in this deck for the White Well, and there is a White Well in Glastonbury. So I got this deck because I have a very close connection with Glastonbury and I always have. The artwork is stunning. I have never done a full reading with this deck. It is brand, brand new, so I really need to go through the cards a little bit more. I might end up doing a walkthrough for you guys, for anyone that also likes Arthurian legend and just Avalon, the Isle of Avalon in general, because the artwork is chef's kiss. It'd be beautiful. And I am very much looking forward to having this around. I also am thinking of putting some of the cards on altars because I'm pretty certain that this is the deck that has the only illustration of Keridwen that I actually like. So if that is the case, which it might be, I will have to check. I have a tendency to forget which deck is which. One of the cards from this deck will likely end up on that altar because I don't have any artwork for Keridwen. So that would be really, really nice to have. So I've never used this deck yet, but I did only get it like two weeks ago. So you're going to have to excuse me for that because I've been busy. I'd be a busy girl sometimes. And uh, so yeah, this is going to be used next. I might end up doing a walkthrough of it just because a lot of you guys really like the Isle of Avalon, Camelot and Glastonbury and all that kind of stuff. So it could be good for you guys. And then lastly is this one. Now, the only annoying thing is that the pentacle on this bag is upside down, but... I actually have used this deck the most of all of them. This is my most used tarot deck of all time. And it is once again in a bag. This is a really nice like fake velvet bag and it's like super fluffy. It's like teddy bear material. It's, it's really soft. So it's in this mainly for protection because the book and the uh, box actually don't sit together. So the book is considerably bigger and it actually sticks out the top of this bag. So I like keeping them together in this very neat way. And also this was the deck that I took to uni with me. So when I was there, God, how long has it been? It's been too long. And I was moving around from flat to flat to flat. I liked keeping them together so that they weren't just, you know, getting lost. So this is the Wild Unknown Tarot and book, obviously, but let's not focus on the book. Let's focus on the deck because that's really what we're here for. So this was actually my first full size tarot deck that I ever got. Now I was a little late to the tarot scene compared to a lot of people. I was so focused on runes that I ended up never really reading tarot for a really long while. The only downside of this is that it does have this super fiddly little leaflet inside and you guys know how much I hate fiddly leaflets, but for being old, this leaflet's actually pretty intact because I'm so paranoid of damaging it that I am like super careful of it. So this deck is stunning. I'm sure most of you in the social media community will have seen this deck or one of its counterparts because now the artist has actually created multiple decks. I think now there's a circular deck and there's also an oracle deck to go alongside it. And I was so tempted to get the oracle deck when it came out, but I, I had restraint for the first time in my life. I had restraint when it came to buying a tarot deck. And this deck is beautiful. It's gorgeous. The illustrations are stunning. They're all like uh, pen ink and then they are gone over with neon colored watercolor and probably one of the most beautiful decks I've ever seen in my entire life. Currently, it's not my most used deck because I am really focusing on the uh, Living Altar Oracle deck. But if I was gonna use a tarot deck, it would either be this deck or the Magic Manga deck, really depending on what I want to have answers for. When I was doing readings for other people, I would use this deck because it often gave perfect answers. 
So when I was in uni and I was part of a society, I would often do tarot readings for people in the society and this was the deck that I always used. However, when it comes to readings for myself, this deck isn't as accurate as the Magic Manga deck. The Magic Manga deck tends to be a little bit sassy with other people, but with me, it gives me really, really good readings. This deck tends to be the other way around. When I'm reading for other people, it is like, spot on. When I'm reading for myself, it tends to be a little bit not quite sure. So at the moment with the situation in the world, I'm not really getting as much use out of this deck as I am out of some of the others. But the imagery, the imagery is gorgeous. It's so beautiful that people actually have full like back piece tattoos of the imagery in this deck because it is so so unbelievably good. So the way it stands at the moment is based off the number of times I've used the deck. So it's it's gonna change over time because some decks I've taken out of my kind of regular circulation and then I add new ones in. So of all time, I'd say my most used deck is the Wild Unknown, mainly because I had it as my only tarot deck for a very, very long time. It was my only deck for a very, very long time. I think I only bought another deck in 2017 so it's been in my circulation by itself essentially besides the fairy tarot for a really really long time then it's the magic manga because i use that a lot for personal readings followed by the work your light and then coming up after it is the living altar deck because that is actually probably going to bump work your light out of circulation for a while because it is just so varied in its answers so those are all the decks that I currently have, besides the two that I have magically managed to misplace during my cleaning of the filming room. I always manage to lose something, and this time it was those two decks. So if I can find them, I will slot them in in this video. If not, then sorry, I will maybe just have to find some photos of them or something. Now, once again, I will just reiterate that you don't need this many decks. And actually, I didn't realize how many decks I had until I started filming this video. And I've currently been filming for over an hour. That is a lot of decks that I didn't realize I had. Well, no, I knew I had them, but I never really bothered to count how many decks I actually had. And I'm now realizing that my collection is a little bit out of control. But you 100% do not need this many decks. You can just have one tarot deck. You can just have one oracle deck. You can just have one of each, or you can have neither. It really is dependent on your own personal practice and whether or not you like to collect them. A lot of people really enjoy collecting different decks by certain illustrators by certain creators. Some people love to collect decks based on artwork, so you might find people collecting fairy decks or mermaid decks or Halloween decks. So it really depends per person. Some of these are decks that I will use all of the time, you know, the Wild Unknown, the Magic Manga, the Living Altar, Work Your Light, the Rider Waite Smith. These are decks that I will use consistently for lots of different reasons. The others are largely collectible pieces or decks that I'm gonna be using for altars or artwork or in manifestation workings. So it really all depends on how you feel per person. I feel a little odd having so many decks. It seems a little bit excessive and it probably really is but I do enjoy collecting them and it also gives me a lot of teaching aids, which is really useful, especially on a channel like this. So don't feel as though you have to have this many decks because you definitely don't and even I probably shouldn't have this many decks. So what is your favorite tarot or oracle deck? I would absolutely love to know. Feel free to post it down in the comment section. Do you have more than one? Do you have a favorite oracle and a favorite tarot deck? Please let me know. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to give it a like. It really, really means so much to me. If you do have any questions, comments, concerns, video ideas, or just want to chit chat with the community, feel free to post it down in the comment section. And if you do enjoy the magical content on this video or on this channel, feel free to hit subscribe. I do try my best to as magical content every single week. And a massive thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys are absolutely awesome. Your names will be on the end screen in just a moment. I hope you guys are all staying safe. I hope you have a marvelous magical day and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys. Where am I gonna put you? I didn't think this through. I'm just gonna have to stack you at the edge of the table and hope for the best. So as you will have noticed already, uh, my hands are different colors again. This time it's not because I'm sitting on it, it's just because this is what my hands like to do. So this hand belongs to someone else and this hand belongs to me and we're just gonna have to deal with it because this is just something that happens sometimes. The downsides of having exceptionally pale skin. Exceptionally 
<coughs> I actually sneezed that time. In the last video, I didn't actually sneeze. And this tower is becoming more precarious by the minute. Mm -hmm.